My boat is frozen in the ice. Maybe I should call it the endurance. One of the engine mounts does not have this piece on it. So I'm gonna have to make one. And how lucky is this? I happen to have this piece of metal. Unfortunately, I cut it in half, but it'll do. Fits around there perfectly. And then it also fits inside of here perfectly. So you can see it's nowhere near as thick as the original mount from Volvo. I'm guessing they made them that thick for a reason. So I'll just put it in here. I'll get some welds in there. Cut this piece off probably. This is all just scrap metal I had sitting around. Should make a perfect engine mount. That's a pretty good fit. All we need to do is get some rubber inside there that's the same size and that should do it. <clears throat> now tell me that's not lucky. I don't normally put these in the snow, but fell in, thought it was cool. I want one! So another bit of old metal, just in case you're wondering. All this metal that I'm getting, I keep in the shed. I've collected it over the years. It's all in this corner. Here's one of the million little ways that I save money. I found all of these bolts. All of the heads are the same. This nut is the only one that's different from the size of all the other nuts, and the nuts are also the same size as the heads. Buck 50 per each bolt, 50 cents for each nut. That puts me at 16 bucks that I got for free just because I picked these up off the street. Well, that was a good day's work. This is just the beginning of the engine mount. I thought I'd show how it all started. So this was supposed to go on the left side, the port side, but I happened to put it over here by accident without looking, and it fit better on this side than it did on the other, so I just left it. These are bolts from a BMW motorcycle that I used to have, so I got those for free also. Just took those off when I disassembled the motorcycle. I've arbitrarily decided to make cuts every hundred millimeters. Hopefully that will make a smooth enough curve so that when I bend the metal around it, it won't have huge gaps to fill. The Endeavor dinghy. So this is how it's turned out so far. A cutlass bearing that would normally go approximately here for my prop shaft costs about a hundred dollars. So I thought I would try to make one myself. Cut out a bunch of nitrile rubber, which is what the cutlass bearings have inside of them. I cut a bunch of pieces that are different heights. And then I'm going to sandwich them together. So when I tried to press this into the tube, it folded in a sort of square way. It didn't really curve around like I needed to. Like I can press this up against the side and it makes a nice curve, but I've still got that angle there to deal with. So this idea is a bust, but I learned a lot from it. So I'm searching through all that metal there looking for something that is one inch in diameter on the inside and then way in that corner back there 
I find my old BMW K75 motorcycle frame, which just happens to be one inch diameter on the inside. Exactly what I need for the bearing. Surgery is complete. Here's what it looks like so far. Going to dig out the grooves a little bit more, but let's see how it fits. Nice. I'm making a second cutlass bearing now because just in case the first one fails, I want to have a backup. I'll be testing the first one for at least an hour on the engine and I'll submerge it in water to spin the shaft on it just to make sure that it lasts at least that long. But the backup will be a quick and easy replacement just in case this one fails. These I made for about 10 bucks. Here's how the second one fits.